Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to look at the sharpening settings, that is the detail panel from the Lightroom. And by end of this video, you will understand all about the sharpening and you can practically apply that to create the sharper images. Welcome to the part 5 of Master Lightroom Mobile Beginner to Expert tutorial series. My name is Omkar and you are watching OTP Photography. These are the things that we are looking in today's video and the timestamps are present in the description. Let us get into the video and look at what is sharpening. Now the sharpness of an image is the level of detail it has. Now the sharpness can depend on various factors such as the camera use, the lens use, the quality of the lens, uh, the aperture settings and all. And all of these settings can only be changed while capturing the photo. Now let's look at these two examples. The image on the left side is sharper than the image on the right side. Now due to limitations of camera hardware and the lens optics, there is only a certain level of uh, sharpness that can be achieved. Generally on DSLR or mirrorless cameras, the more expensive lenses will produce the sharper images. Now there is no way that you can achieve such details with the help of a cheaper camera and the cheaper lenses. The optics of those lenses aren't capable of that. And now this is where the post processing comes into the picture, literally. With the help of these sharpening sliders, you can increase the apparent sharpness of the photo. It makes very subtle changes to very fine details of the image and it increases the contrast of the edges. And this way you can make the photo look sharper. All of the smartphones do some amount of sharpness when you capture the photo. But let us see how you can manually add the sharpness to your photo using Lightroom Mobile. We'll look at all the sliders one by one. Let's first look at how the first slider that is the sharpness slider work. Let us look at this image of almonds. And I'll explain you the working of these sliders using this photo. The first slider is the sharpening slider and you can set the amount of sharpening you want to add. Let us zoom in and look at what it is exactly doing to the image. Remember that I said the contrast is the most important aspect in the photo editing. The sole reason for that is the contrast helps to enhance or make something more pronounced by increasing the difference between the brightness. The same thing happens when we increase the sharpness. It increases the contrast only in the high frequency region. This is where we have a high amount of details such as these edges of the photo. This is before applying the sharpening and this is after. See how it also affects the noise of the image here. But now we only want to apply this sharpening to the edges of the photo. We don't want to apply it to the all over the image as it is right now. So to control that we have this masking slider. Now what is this masking? Masking is an important tool or feature when you use the Photoshop. The simple idea of the masking is to control the area where the effect is being applied. Now to visualize this mask, we need to use two fingers to control this slider. If you are using Lightroom on a desktop, then you need to press Alt or Option key while using this slider. Now for the mobile application, I will use the two fingers. You can see that the whole screen is white. It means that the sharpening is being applied to the whole image. As I increase the masking slider, we are introducing more and more black color to the image. And the white color is getting closer and closer only to the edges of the photo. It means that the sharpening is now being applied only where there is the white color. In the mask, white color represents where the effect is being applied. So you want to have this masking in such a way that it should only cover the edges. With this, you can precisely control where the sharpness is being applied. Now let us look at the radius and detail slider. Here, after applying the masking, you can see that the sharpening has created a dark and bright pixel around the edges. This is what I referred to as applying the contrast. It is making the brighter things brighter and darker things darker. The thickness of this bright and dark pixels around the edges can be controlled by the radius slider. You can see that if I increase the radius slider, how it affects. It is increasing the thickness of that bright and dark layer. You can even use this two finger method here and it will show you the picture in this manner where you can clearly see the effect of the radius slider. Now let's move on to the detail slider. It works to preserve the details around the edges. It will identify the edges in the photo and this slider will work on to emphasize that. Do not overdo the sharpening effect. It becomes so obvious if you overdo it and one of the purpose of editing your photo is to make them look better, is to enhance those photos without making the editing look obvious for the viewer. Let's move on to the next set of slider that is noise reduction. Look at this place in the image. It has noise in it. Now if I increase the luminance slider, you can see how it removes the noise and makes it look more smoother. This slider will detect the sudden variation in the brightness in the photo and it will smooth out those artifacts. But if you overdo it, it will also smooth out the details in the photo. 
Now let's look at this detail slider. With the help of this detail slider, we can retain the details which can get smooth out due to the luminance. And with the help of this contrast slider, we can increase the contrast around those edges. Unless and until you have a considerable amount of noise in your photo, you shouldn't really use the luminance slider. Because this noise is only visible when you zoom into the photo. And if you are going to upload this photo to Instagram or Facebook or any other social media, people are not going to zoom into your photo and this noise won't really matter to that. So let's move on to the next set of sliders that is the color noise reduction. Similar to the noise which is the abnormalities in the brightness of the photo, the image can have the color noise. For example, this random red, blue, purple colors as you can see here are color noise. To remove this color noise, that is to remove the variance between these color pixels, color noise reduction is used. In this image, if I move this color noise reduction slider to the right, see how it has affected the photo and it has removed those color noise from the photo. And below that we have these two settings which are details and the smoothness. You can play around them, honestly you really don't have to touch these sliders. I hope you have understood about all these sliders and how they work. If you want more technical insight about these sliders, I'll give a link in the description to an article from f-stoppers, you can check it out. Now let's apply the sharpening settings over these two images. This is our first photo that we are editing from the part 1 of this series. Let us go into the detail panel here. As I said, I'll keep the sharpening somewhere between 80 to 100, uh, somewhere around 90 is good. And I'm going to apply the masking with the help of two fingers. So somewhere around this is looking good. And I am not really going to touch to the radius and detail slider, the default settings are good enough for me. I will add a little bit of noise reduction. I will add a lot of color noise reduction because at this place you can see there is a lot of color noise here. If I increase it too much, you can see it has smoothed out all those details. And that's it for this photo. We have edited this photo from the very beginning and this was the before and this is the after. Now let's apply the sharpening to this photo. We will go into the detail panel. I will add the sharpness uh, somewhere around 80 here and I will also add the masking. We will do a little bit of noise reduction as well and some level of color noise reduction as well. And we have edited this photo from the part 1 also and this was the before when we started editing this photo and this is the after. And that is all from today's video. The next video in this series will be about the grading settings that is from the color panel. That's it from today's video. Hope you learned something new. Follow me on Instagram at OTP Photography. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.